Hi there, everyone. This is Soul Super 17 here. Let me get through this like usual. I did not own anything to do with Black Hole or Fairy Tale. So I don't own any of the characters, any manga, nothing. I did not own this picture, and this is not a paid video. Okay, okay. It's just a fun, yeah. But anyways, um, if you hear noises, guys, that's my nieces. They're, um, they stay the night. And last week, like, they did, did the same thing, so these videos may be a little bit late on when they're going to be, like, uploaded, but, yeah, um, do you hear noise? That's them. I basically just woke up not too long ago, and I've been trying to go back to sleep, but I can't, so I figured, hey, why not? Hold up. Okay, sorry. Just fine. Mises. Yeah. But, um, in this video, I do believe it. I'll be at the Sea Temple arc of the anime. Yeah. I do believe I would. So. I am going to basically have, because Agnel's still alive, he's been watching Asa all this time. I'm only, you know. So he's been kind of like keeping track of Asa. And basically, he's going to help Asa. But something's going to happen. And then he's going to give Asa a special gift. No one, it is my what if in this, so if anyone wants to say anything about it, yeah, I really, really just don't care right now, because I'm just awake, not even awake yet, all the way, so, this is going to be a really interesting video to even try to do, but, yeah, okay, okay, understand, alright, so, where do we start? Dart. Huh. Alright, so. I guess it'll be after they took down the Purple Orca's captain. Um, yeah. Basically, the Magic Knight captain who took down the Purple Orcs. Orca's captain. You know, the one that turns invisible and kind of presence with magic. Basically. Is captured by Nerd Captain. So, you know, he goes over to Asa saying, Wow, I'm, you know, like Asa saying, Wow, you're Magic Knight Captain, we're like the same age. He goes, Yeah, I know, can we be friends? He goes, like, You know, yeah, sure, that happens. And then, after everything that does happen in the canon, um, Julius does have to speak with Captain Yami and Asta. So, he does, like, you know, they go over to his office, and he says, Yami and Asta, I am giving you and the Black Bulls a mission to go to the temple that is underneath the sea. We believe there's a magic stone there that the Midnight Sun may try to get, so, so I'd like you to go there and retrieve it. So... Still young. I mean, Yami says, Alright then, we'll go and do it. And he goes, oh, Thank you. Yami, and he goes, No problem. And basically, they, uh, they're going back to the, med back to the Black Bulls hideout. Oh, yeah, minerals there too, probably. Because how else would they get back? So I'm flying, and I don't ever think I see Yami falling on a broomstick. He always takes mineral, so. Finral was there, and you know, once portal, they get back. Yeah, they get to the Black Bulls hideout. And then, when they get to the hideout, basically, Yami tells everyone to gather around. We're gonna go. I got to explain everything. So, he explains everything, saying they're gonna be going to the, going to the sea, as the Nidigo 
basically to the sea temple and try to find uh, the stone that they need to do. And everyone's getting excited. You know, so everyone starts packing up. Like, um, just to point out, I, I cannot remember the people's names of the water temple. So I'll just give them, I'll just give a description of them for you. Like, I'll say this is the one that can use her magic to sing and, like, heal people or amp up their attack or, you know, things like that. I mean, so you guys will know, I can, this is why I was, I was trying to take longer, but since my nieces are here, I haven't had a chance to look at the names or anything else, so please understand. Alright, okay, so. So they're getting everything packed up. Asa is basically, like, thinking, hmm. What can I do? What can I do? What can I do while well, I'm at the beach and train? Oh, well, I could probably use my fire around my body and then go into the water and then try to increase my temperature and my, and my flames bit by bit. And, you know, I'm getting used to not having any magic on, in the water. Hmm. This is going to be quite an interesting time for me now. <laughs> and then he looks at Nehru and he says, Isn't that right, Nehru? And Nehru's just having that same stare like always. And he goes, ah, If only you could talk, this would probably be a lot more interesting conversation, wouldn't it? Nehru doesn't answer. He goes, Yeah, he would. So he picks up just... He packs up, um, basically, some of his, he packs up a couple of shirts, shorts, um, shoes, where else he needs, and, yeah. So, because I did not see the part if they were, like, staying, so, I was also trying to catch up on it, but I, all I know is, in there, um, when they get there, no, you know, they, uh, they basically don't have, like, a certain person work with them. It's the guy with the poison magic. They don't have him with. So, also just tells Finroll to open up a portal so he can go get him. And he does, he goes and gets him, and they're, like, you know, they're, they left him there. So, he says, sorry, man, sorry, my... Sorry, you know, to him. And then he just, like, you know, whispering in his hand. It's like, oh, it's alright, also, at least you came back and get me. And it's like, yeah. <laughs> and, you know. So, basically, while they were there, Noel was, like, you know, everyone was having fun while Noel was just, you know, also doing whatever she was. Also, was just mostly training during the day with far away from people, and, so, yeah, but, that night, he notices that, you, that, um, Noel is gone, and, he goes over, and, base it, hold up, everyone, okay, sorry, sorry, okay, so, basically, um, yeah, so while she's training, Asta notices that she's trying really hard. You know, so if he's saying, huh, and she's still putting in the work. That's good. So, he, um, oh uh, yeah, by the way, she did get the magical wand that she did in canon to, you know, use her magic. So she has a lot of good control over it. And, you know, this, the same girl who, well, she had to fight in the sea temple, the one that can sing and everything else, and, you know, like I said, that could heal people, I, I'll i get her name in, the, like, the next video, alright, 
I'll get the name of the people. So I'm just going to go up to the part when Asta is about to do something. Like enter something. Because I think it'll be the best part. Okay? Okay. Okay, so. While... Um, Asta's watching, he's seen, you know, watching Noel and Noel train with this strange person. He doesn't know. He's just thinking to himself, hmm. Man. If only Igni was here, he's probably very impressed with, with this. A warrior will try, trying their hardest to do some magic. They said all the other royals are nothing compared to her. <laughs> yeah, this is fun. And <clears throat> Nero is sitting on his head too, and she just starts pecking a little at him. He goes, "Oh, you hungry?" She, you know, he basically never goes on his finger. She says, nods her head, "No." You tired? And she nods her head, "Yes." And then he was like, "Oh." Alright. And then he says, Hey Noel, keep practicing and you'll get master of your magic in no time. Trust me. And Noel was saying, Yeah, thanks. So while, while Asta's walking, he's kind of just thinking, Hmm. I mean, he's thinking like this. Okay, so... My magic, I've been thinking for a while, kind of not sense if anyone else has magic with it. Like others, I mean, I can make sure my magic can't be sensed. But maybe I can use it also to sense other people's magic power. Some degree or something. Because I really don't want to kill someone by accident. He's been thinking about this for like a while, and that's what he keeps on trying to do. So, but he keeps on failing at it. And I am gonna make somebody talk early. Yes, I am making Nero talk early. Reasons why. Because it's my what if, and also I think it'll be. Good chance to help him out. Like, you know, she'll help him out. Reason how? I'm just with, you know, different type of magic sensory, you know, help. So, what she does is when Asa gets back to the room, Nero, before he starts falling asleep, you know, about to you know, sit down and fall asleep, she says, I can help you, you know. And then he's like looking at her. At near, he was like, "You can talk." She goes, "Yeah, you're not freaking out." And he goes, "I seen a dragon talk. You really think a little bird would would make me freak out?" And then she transformed into a human form with the, you no. Know, they said the horns on her, and then he's like. And then he's like, he jumps, and uh, since she's like, on, you know, back to being a human form, he jumps and says, Holy freaking crap! You're a human! And she goes, Yeah, it's like I turn myself into a bird. And he's like, Oh, okay then. So, I think we talked all this time, Asta Sandler. Why did you not talk to me when every time I was talking to you? And she says, I have my reasons. And he goes, Okay. I'm not going to pry into it, because I'd be wrong, but I technically am curious on what those reasons are. And she's just saying, those are my reasons. Nothing more, nothing less, and don't ask me, or I won't help you. He's only like, fine. So tell me, what can you help me with now? She's just saying, like, he can't, she can help him with just sensing some magic. And he's going like, okay. So what I gotta do? I mean, I can focus on people's chi. You know, but... 
I kind of want to sense how big people's magic are. So it's a little bit more easier for me to tell if my magic power is useful or not. The tree is good. Don't get me wrong. I just want to have a little bit of something on my side. You know? Those some of those because it's getting really annoying that people can see my... Can, you know, every time I try to use my magic, they can always sense it fully, and yet I can't sense theirs but their chi. So I just think, hey, I just want to sense just a little bit of magic, that's it. So Nero was just saying, alright, alright, I do believe there is a way, but you just may not like it, or it just may be too hard for you. And that still looks a little bit pissed off, and like, what do you mean? Goes, oh, well, you use your own mana to sense matter, but since you don't have any, I would give you, like, a, there would be, like, a magical item that will help you. But there's, a there's no magical item that's like that, so, we might as well, like, be able to find it if we get the right materials. But, that'll take a while, so... It may be better if right now you just focus on the chi, then when we have a chance to work on the magical items, we will. And also just says, hmm. interesting. Alright, this is gonna be fun. And then he says, tell him, don't tell no one that you're talking, and I can match the girl. And he was like, huh, why would I? It ruined all the fun then for me. She goes, what? Well, it's, just, it's good to know I'm not alone, you know, all the time. But it's also better that uh, I actually have someone to talk to because it's, this magic and me are kind of a little bit, you know, unique. So I have someone else around that's unique in same, some way or form. It's kind of a little bit nice. And never doesn't like show anything. She just says, "Just go to bed, Asta." And he just smiles and says, "All right, night, never." And then she turns back to a bird and says, "Night," and you know they both fall asleep. So it takes, you know, uh, she, Noelle keeps on training like crazy every night until the day you know she's a. Uh, you know, she became stronger, and that's the same day when they're going to the Sea Temple, so, yeah. We're going to the Sea Temple now. Alright. So, when they're going through it, it's basically... You know, the reason why they can't go is because it was ever seen and Noel would help out with it, so that's why, you know, they were waiting all this time and Noel was working so hard. And um when they got down to the temple, everyone was really being really nice to them saying hello and everything else and there's three people. And they really did not expect this, like it was a rough time getting there, very, very dangerous. They, some of them thought they were going to die, but, you know, they didn't. So, they all get there. And, basically, you know, they're saying that we're here to get the stone, and they point to the temple of the sea dragon god, or princess, whatever. So, yeah. I'm just, like I said, I'm not really awake, so please understand that. Okay? Alright. So, yeah. So, when they go up to the temple, you know, they are met with monsters. Yami just says, Asta, and Asta just says, I know, alright, you know, basically, I say, I know what to do. So, basically, he just runs, punches one, jumps off a wall, punches another one, then, you know, Roar, does dragon so I mean uh, the bra dragon roar <sighs> yeah or a 
dragon, yeah. And then, you know, they turned to poof, they, they poofed and everything. And this, the guy, the old man, basically, the one who be sitting with Yami and watching everything happen with him, is like saying, Oh, very impressive, very impressive. Only one of you seems to have power that I do not know about. <laughs> uh, welcome to the Seed Temple. And then Yami walks up to him saying, Where is the magic stone? And he says, what? Oh, the magic stone you're after. All right, then. Well, I would give it to you, but I am the guardian of here, so I need to test you. So basically, he's just going to, like, have them fight people and, like, maneuver around the temple. So, yeah. That's the saying. All right. This is going to be fun. And so... So, so, basically, while they're, um, going around, they have to go around and everywhere else, you know, they also fight monsters, um, Vanessa, Charmy, Magna, and Lut also fight some people, so, oh yeah, um, I'm trying, I cannot remember the person's name, but the one that's the big guy at first, I can, that's really a girl, they can use her magic that's very shy, and transform into something, so, yeah, she's there too, uh, but this one, as the poison, we have the poison or curse magic, or per poison slash curse magic, is there... I'm just tired, guys. I'm sorry. I need to make this video. So, yeah. Okay, but basically, he's there. Now, so, it's gonna be a little bit easier for some people. Because he's who he's with. So, he... So, when Asa goes... After fighting through some people and some monsters... He made it... Made up of guy. A guy that... Had swords... He's saying, basically, he says, Oh, so you're my opponent now, huh? You know, also saying to him, he was, the guy saying, Yes, I am. So he brings up the sword and says, Now then, let's get started. And you know, so he's like running over to Asa, like, you know, start slashing, Asa dodging, slashing, dodging. Then he dodges, he one he ducks and says, Iron Fist of Dragon. And his whole entire fist goes on fire. And the guy's just shocked. And boom. He just punches the guy right in the stomach. Sending him flying. And then he he didn't like hit him hard enough to knock him out one shot. No. No. He's holding him back. So. That guy gets back up. And says. Well. You're pretty strong. He goes. Pretty strong. I'm the only one that can ever use this magic, so I gotta be strong. And he's like, what is your magic? And Asa just says, Dragon Slayer magic. And I have the swords of saying, you know, that basically came out of his sleeve. They say, wow, that's pretty impressive. He goes, yeah. So, let, let's continue on. He goes, yeah, let's continue. So, you know, they're continuing to fight. Um, Noelle's finding the girl that can sing, you know, using her magic into her voice, that can, you know, sing and attack with and heal people with. So, yeah, that's happening, you know. She's telling her that she's holding back against her because it's, she's her friend, she's saying thank you and all that. And then, um, Nana and La you know, are about to fight this person, the father of them, but then someone comes and interrupts, but before that, let me go over to what was happening onto the seaside, Magic Knights were there, haha, <laughs> the guy was there, basically saying the Wizard King told them to go and come here to help out the Black Bulls, I think, or just, you know, give, protect the Black Bulls in their search or whatever, and then 
I'm the Midnight Suns there, and the guy with the, the the guy in the spear is there too. So, what happens with them happens, all right. And so they get into the, basically goes into the water. I turn use his magic to make it start. And yeah, okay, so that happens. And then Asta basically. <sighs> Um, so, no, Asta, so Lot and Magna are about to face their opponent when he interrupts and, you know, basically takes that person down. We got the guy, oh man, the devil, guardian saying, that was my son, how was he able to be so defeated so quickly, he was going to be the next guy. And, you know, Nyami's just saying, well, I told you these guys would come, you know, all that, and... Basically, um, everyone was talking, while they were sitting down and like eating and talking, you know, he's been saying everything to his team, so he tells them that I'm a nice sonner here, you know, be careful guys, also, if you have to, try to break through your limits, and the, uh, um, the beast user magic of the Midnight Sun, I'm just gonna call him Despair. Despair basically says, I'm gonna save you for last. You know, Captain, after I kill that kid with that magic that requires no grimoire. Captain Yami just starts laughing. Everyone hears it, and he's like, What? What are you laughing at? He says, That kid with no grimoire is probably stronger than me. Maybe. I don't know. But it's one interesting fight that you'll have with him, I I bet. So, yeah. So, then what happens with Man and Luck happens the same way. But I'm going to go into it, but actually not. I'm going to change it up, basically. Man and Luck. Man has thrown fireballs at him. You know, even makes a bend, hits one of his fireballs, and they explode. Luck keeps on using electricity and even trying to punch him he's basically trying to copy Asta's movements because he thinks he can be able to at least be able to do it with the punch right with his lightning if he does somewhat the same thing it's somewhat working he's going to damage he's saying what it, he's all they also been training harder because of Asta they've been training harder to get even stronger and this fire is way stronger he's and then let's just say, I'm going to give him a new move. Just because I like Magna, and just because he's been training harder, putting in the work, the time, when he doesn't have missions. Along with luck. So, I'm going to give him, like, he has a fireball, has a bat, but now he can even summon out a fire, not dragon, but just like a Something like a fire demon, like it has a tail and wings and basically has horns and it looks like something what you would see when you're just not expecting something to come out from a certain place. So he says, fire demon. And when he says that his, uh, the area, the area starts to go on fire, then fire shoots up and it's like a demon there. And then he says, take down that guy. You know, the Midnight Sun. Okay, and that, well, that's happening. Everyone else is facing against the other people, the Midnight Sun. Vanessa's facing the same guy who's like, stealing her magic. And then basically, she's able to steal, take her magic back along with more magic. You know, a little bit more magic than what she had. Then, Charmy. I mean, then Ghosh and... The girl who can transform basically is passed out. Charmy's there, and you know, she tries to wake him up. And also, the poison guy is there too. So he held them up, but they were still exhausted. Here's our here. It's a little bit more to the Midnight Sun than what they had to fight with. So, yeah, they they almost all they were like, um, Mana, and they passed out. But, um, but, you know, 
it's uh, it's good. So let's go back to Magna and Blot. So Blot has increased his speed and strength. Magna had got a new magic spell, but they but they still can't beat him. So they're finally going to do something with an all-out attack with everything they that got left. So they do exactly the same, you know, the same move. They turn all their magic power into it. Basically, he gives them the time to, and yeah, when it explodes, Asta and the guy with the sword in his sleeves, you know, comments, you know, they see an explosion, so they rushed over, but, you know, like in canon, they, well, Austin and this guy with the swords, basically, are fighting, they kept on hearing, like, someone hurt, and hold up, everyone, okay, I'm back, everyone, so, yeah, so, they were following this big amount, uh, like, you know, I was following the big amount of key. Everyone's following the big amount of magic. You know, they have the swords, and he's basically saying to us that even though you don't have any, like, weapon with you, your magic is pretty strong to go against me. He goes, yeah, I've been holding back against you. He just basically tells him flat out, right? He goes, what? He goes, yeah, if I wanted to, I probably could have, like, punched you in on the first one, and you might have been knocked out, or at least seriously, bat, like, puking. He was like, uh, along for a little burn on you, so, uh. and he's like, uh, uh, wow. So, when they, you know, when they saw this explosion, they're rushing over. When they get there, they see Lot and Magna are basically on the ground, unconscious so also don't mind the freaking noise in the background of the TV that's a TV and that's my nieces watching it so please understand yeah okay okay well and um in the so wipes when you know um they come in despair sees them and also sees the guy the you know the spare and he's on like Oh, so you're back. Ready for round two, big guy? As Asta just cracking his knuckles, flames coming off of him. And as soon as the spare sees him, he goes like, You, you worthless human trash. I've been waiting to fight you. And he goes like, <laughs> Waiting? Well, be happy. The wait's over. So let's do this thing. So, the guy with the sword is just like saying, How did you? He goes, Oh, I faced him once. I can't. It was three against one, and I was kicking all of their butts. <laughs> they couldn't freaking keep up with me. And he was like, I got. And the spare has actually trained. He is actually, you know, got a lot stronger than what he was in canon because he saw what Asta could do, and he did not like the, that he was losing to a mere human child. So he got a little bit. He got stronger in his magic and his hatred, and basically, body got stronger too. So he's like, it won't end up the same way like last time, and I'll make you finally feel despair. As Asta is just saying, spare this, spare that. Let's just freaking fight. And it also just blitzes him. At incredible speeds that no, that basically the guy with the swords, I will get his name in the next video. So this video will be probably like 50 something minutes, not 50, 80, 48 something or 40 minutes long. So when I feel like I should stop where I want, then yeah. Okay. Okay, so, he's saying to himself, what, is he even human? I can barely see him. And then Asta's, like, increasing the speed even more, to the point where he just disappeared. And then, all you hear is, Iron Fist of Dragon. And boom. 
he, there's like a huge, like he, there's like a huge fire, I mean a fist, just not a huge fist, there's like a huge sound coming in, at despair, and he didn't know, but also punched him so hard in the stomach that it made a freaking noise in the air delayed, and he's on the ground coughing, because he doesn't like time to catch his breath, he doesn't know what hit him, but he's... He's gonna get used to us as speed, basically. So he's a uh, start of just take hits on purpose to get used to his speed, and he does. And then he hits us, sends him flying. Then, out, then uh, the guy with the source for that comes out of sleep, stop getting his shot, and he's also like, I think he yeah, he dances too, so he's fighting him that way and. He's shown off a little bit more. Asta's not, you know, doesn't want to use the black flames just yet because he thinks if he does, it'd be like way too easy against him. So he doesn't want to. He wants to hold that as a, like his trump card for now. So, you know, while they're fighting and everything else, um,. You know, they're, they're, they're putting up a good fight against him. Like, a really good fight than what it was in canon. Because Voss does mean Dragon Slayer. Fire Dragon Slayer. So, no, and the girl that sings and, you know, that can make, what that can attack with using her magic while singing and everything else. She, you know, the exact same thing happens. They come and, you know, try to help out. So, yeah. Also, with the thing with Vanessa, Finral going to Tommy and the you know the transformation magic that you know transform stuff that does not happen or you know she's not you know they're not going to be able to do this or anything because what I'm making Asa do all right okay so right when you know they come in they're putting up a better fight now but so he gets tired of like Asta, so he like hits him hard enough so that way he's he's like really really damaged in one shot and then you know because of the sister and the brother I mean the guy with the well, yeah basically brother and sister the guy with the sword and the guy and the girl like Saint or brother and sister like I said I'll get their names alright that's the no, next video okay okay um as soon as they start Fight, you know, fighting and everything else. He gets tired of it, so he does exactly the same thing. Cuff the girl's huh? and cut the guy's leg, and hurts the girl's throat. And same thing happens with Noelle. She, you know, she gets mad and learns Sea Dragon War, which takes off half of the guy's body. And. Ah, uh, and then, you know, then he's, you know, regrows it, and then, I mean, and then, you know, does the beast roar, and Asa, he just comes in, before he even hits her, and he says, and so he increases the flame, he basically uses the black flame, and says, Dark Dragon on your fist! Because he doesn't want to say demon, he knows it's a demonic power, but he doesn't want to say it. So, inside his head, he's saying, anti-magic on your fist. But, I was like, he's saying, dark dragon on your fist. So, it hits the, f it hits the basic attack, and it just blows up. And he's, Asa's, you know, he took some damage from that explosion, because it's not like he has a sword, so he can just cut right through it. He's going to take some damage on this. And so he's huffing and puffing. You know, still again. And he says, are you right, Noelle? And she goes, how about you? Goes, well, the girl who uh, basically can sing. And, you know, turns out she was using the last bit. She could of her magic to heal me. And I was just thinking, I'm useless. He goes, so then he pats her on the head and says, you did a really good job. Now I'll take it up. You know, do the rest of this. But she goes, how are you? He goes, <laughs> This ain't nothing. I've been holding back all this time. Can't you tell? And she goes, oh, yeah. 
Just well now. As he cracks his neck, it's time to. And just then, he, he hears uh, someone call his name saying, Asta! Well, you know, I don't want to do the void. Well, yeah, just not like, you know, just basically saying, Asta. And boom, crashes right in. It is Igneal! Igneal crashing right through. Basically, he saw what was happening with the Midnight Sun. So he's thinking, Asta's not ready for this. He knows about the anti-magic Asta has, but he's not ready. So he flew over to Hodge Village. Basically, really quickly. He went over and got the Five Leaf Grimoire. I'm bringing that in. So everyone... So because if someone said I should have given it, yes, I was I wanted to give Asa some more character development for giving him the five of Grimoire, make him very OP. But he's never gonna he's only gonna use it one time. Because basically that time I made it, demon's gonna tell him the sources will do exactly the same thing. And basically you're gonna you know, don't really need it. Then you go there, oh really? He goes, Yeah, just uh, have it with you just in case. You never know. You may find some swords, you know, that you're gonna need. He's like, oh, all right. Now, I might have wait. Um, Igneal did grab the Demon Dwell sword. So, when he saw the book, grabbed the book, he talked to the demon. He's saying, like, demon. He's like, ah, Igneal's actually the. I should really do the demon. I guess it. He goes, like, <laughs> Igneal. The dragon. It's been a long time, old friend. He was like, we don't have enough time for chit chat. And, uh, so he takes the book and he goes, and then it opens up. He goes, oh, you got the demon dwell sword. Good. Put it in the book. And yeah, so he does. So he's flying over. And so how he got through the sea, and he'll cover himself in fire. And he's just going right into the sea. Of course, it's weakened him a lot because he's using, he is like, Near the end of his life, and he doesn't want Asta to die, so he's he's just gonna go in and help out as best he can. But he is like very very weak. It is very close to his death time, so he's not gonna be very powerful at the mo at this time, because this is like the last remaining. Like he's using like an ember, you can say, but no, he still has like a full on flame. It's just it's just very very weak. It wasn't used. It wasn't like when it was with Asta when he was younger. So yeah, so so that's over to when Inyo comes in. You know, Asta saying, Inyo, you're still alive." And then Inyo saying, "Yes, Asta, I've been alive all this time. I've been watching you from afar, keeping an eye to make sure you don't rub, you know, wreck a muck." Run amok. And he was like, Hey, I want to... Also, he's just like saying, Hey, I want to do that. You taught me better than that with my... With the Dragon Slayer ma magic. And he just starts laughing and saying, Yes. And then he says, Here, catch. So he just like throws the book to Asta. He catches it. He goes, the, A five... He's just like seeing this book. I want to say a five leaf cream water. But the anti-magic goes like, Hey, kid. And he's saying, So, you're in this book. He goes, Yep, look, you probably don't need it for right now. But if you need more magic, there's two swords in here that can help you. And also, it gives you a better chance than always going in up close and personal with your fists. And us just, just laughing a little. Yeah, this will be fun. Now, but then he's about to do nice thing. Inno, I'm gonna, Inno says, No, I'll take care of him. He's too strong for you. But Asa saying, no, he's not. I can handle him with, you know, because I can help you. And you know, knows, but he's not strong enough. So he says, but if anything gets too serious, get out of here as soon as possible, Asta. Asta nods his head and says, all right, then let's do it. So basically, just imagine when it was like, Eno versus the dragon that he did in Fairy Tale. And also versus the, the Demon King. You know, those things, those like two side, side moments, 
I mean, those panels were like, you know, them attacking with like the same attack and looking the same way. Yeah, imagine that. Like, imagine they're both together and Igneo's just throwing a massive, a big fist at the guy. He's using his magic to take most of the blow with it. And Asa's then hit it too. So, you know, exactly the same thing's happening. Basically, he's fighting. So he's fine. He says, I had enough. And, you know, the rage is happening. He hits Asta back to cause him onto a wall hard enough to cause him to go unconscious. Inyo is saying, Inyo gets mad and he's just covering himself in, in flames. And the flames look like they like, are so powerful that, I mean, so strong and hot that everyone's having a hard time breathing. He says, how dare you, Inyo's telling him, how dare you. Hurt my son, you know, family, son, whatever you want to think of. I'm just saying family. So how dare you hurt my family? And you know, he tries to attack him. You know, he's attacking him like stronger now, using a lot more of his magic. Then he's when Inyo, Inyo is huffing and puffing. The guy says, "I'll end this." So he covers his legs with his magic. And it has his arms cover his magic, like beast boots and beast claws. And then, you know, is about to use a um, roar of dragon. That's when he f cuts right into Igneo's chest. I mean, not chest. Yeah, it cut right into where Igneo's lung is. And it comes out the other end. And Igneo then falls to the ground. And he's near Asta, too. So, while Despair is laughing... Everyone's like saying no. Asa's somewhat conscious. Like he's gaining it back. He was only knocked out for a couple of minutes, but he's gaining his consciousness back. He saw what happened. He's like it's like it's a dream. But then he hears Igneo saying Demon I need you to do something for me. He's saying what do you need? I mean basically he says <laughs> What do you need, Igneo? He says, you know, Igneo says to him, Work together with Asta. And then he just says, What? Work together with this human? I'm supposed to possess, you know, basically, you know, I'm supposed to possess him. Igneo says, You won't win if you don't work together. He goes, And then my demon just will say, How do you know that? Maybe I can help him out, but without really helping him out. <laughs> be a lot more easier than if I've actually possessed him. And Inyo's just telling him, you won't win if you try to do it by yourself. Only with, you know, working with Asta, you'll get your revenge. And the demon is thinking, how can you go, I know enough people in my life that want revenge. I've seen it before. And while he's like coughing up blood. And by the way, just pretend Inyo's having a very hard time talking. You know, very short breaths and trying to talk. So, yeah. Alright. Okay. So, the head manager the demon says, fine. And... Then Inyo says, oh, before I go, <laughs> Asta, yeah, take everything I have, my magic, my flames, everything. And also you too, demon. So Batan Inyo's, like, using the last of remaining of his strength, and what? And what Luxus did with Natsu, Inyo's doing the exact same thing with Asta. And then he basically transfers all everything else into it. So it also will have Inyo's flames permanently. And his magic re reserves went up sky high. Like, really, they burst. And also, the the finally for more also changes. Okay. It changed. Now the book has flames covering it. 
like the design of the book actually changed to where flames are covering it. And because the anti magic demon was also given this given it too. Yeah. So he so as long as he's with Asa, he has this power. So he's been covered basically he has been He's like technically, you could say he technically turns into a dragon. He has like till he begins the anti major really get the scales on one. As Asta is like getting transfer, he's seen Enil fade away. He says, Kimpai, Asta, I'm glad I have met you." And that's when Asta gets re like had like in fully caution. He goes, "No, Enil, Enil," and you know Enil disappears. The anti magic. And also, the demon, well, basically the demons getting really pissed. Because now he's seen, now he can feel Asa's, like, he's basically, he can feel Asa's emotions since he was in, like, already a part of him. He tells Asa just to grab the book and let's beat this guy. For Igneo, right? Asa says, yeah. So he grabs the book. And right, because despair is laughing that he disappeared. Asta has tears coming down his eyes, and then all you see is Asta saying, Demon Dragon on your fast! And punches the dude. Punches the spare, sends him flying. And it has the same way when uh, Lucy got, well, future Lucy got killed. Basically, tears going down his eyes, that's happening. He says, I'm gonna make you pay. I'm gonna make you pay for killing my father. So, because Asa thought Igneo was his, you know, father, and he, him and Igneo were like family because of the charms. So, you know, he basically said, "This is a proof that you are are part of my family, along with Natsu, Dragneo." And he still has the crystal or well, marble-like crystal ball, marble balls, you know, the red, blue, and green. So he activated to heal himself too. And he's saying, I'm going to make you pay. And that's where I'm going to end it off, everyone. Hope you guys enjoy it. I'm in the middle of this. I started waking up, okay? Okay. So, but still, I hope you guys enjoy this part, what if. Um, basically, this is what if Asta was a, a dragon, I mean, fire dragon slayer. I think part seven or part eight? Part seven, probably. But yeah. Okay. Uh, like I said, I'm going to get the names and put them in the video next time. All right, all right. Um, sorry for having this on a cliffhanger, but you know, I want. I thought it would be pretty, pretty, uh, pretty interesting for next time. What I'm gonna do? Okay. And also, my nieces are here, so I don't wanna make it longer than I need to. All right. Bye, everyone. Have a nice night, day, and whatever.